Hi, I'm Junior. And as you heard, I'm going to be performing a run of SSX 2000 All Race Scolds. This is ran in the single event category, which means I just play each track once. And the objective is to play all six tracks within the race category of the game. Uh, before I get too deep into it, I'd like to introduce Helix, my commentator, if you'd like to say hi, Helix. Hi, Helix. That's what you told me to say. <laughs> they did say it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know that there's been a very competitive bid war for who's going to be chosen as the character. So since I'm not entirely sure who's won or winning, who is? Who should I be playing? I cannot believe this. This is the closest I have ever ever seen any bid war in anything ever <laughs> oh my goodness this has been back and forth thank you everyone for raising over a thousand dollars towards this donation incentive our winner by literally 20 cents 20 cents is kaori we will be using kaori for this run amazing i couldn't be happier 20 cents, 20 cents. i've seen a bid war tie but i've never seen that before <laughs> that's insane i love it well, I'm down with that. Okay, the order I choose the tracks in doesn't really matter. It used to, uh, but with a rule alter uh, alteration, rather, it was then decided I could play in any order I want. So I'm going to be taking it from what's hardest or least consistent for me personally, and then just go from there. That said, I'm going to be starting with Mercury City Meltdown. And with that, I'm ready to give a countdown. Three, two, one, begin. Best of luck, Junior. Thank you, thank you. So. So. Uh, oh, yeah. You go. I, yeah. <laughs> what exactly is SSX? SSX is an arcade style snowboarding game. This is a launch title, SSX 2000. This was a launch title for the PS2. And it was the like the foundation of the entire uh, SSX series, really. As a result, if you're familiar with SSX Tricky or 3, it doesn't have those kind of uber tricks or infinite boosts. I'm going to be consistently doing tricks to build up boost and use that boost to maintain speed. And that's the general flow of the games. Yeah, so this track is pretty hard. Junior's going to concentrate a little bit. So I will just sort of explain a lot of the basic mechanics. Uh, big thing you saw at the start of this track, and we'll see at the start of every track, is the start boost. If you basically just like press up at a certain time, uh, you can get a really fast launch out of the starting gate. Uh, this timing is different for every character. Uh, Junior's pretty happy that Kaori won, because Kaori, Kaori has a pretty good start boost. Second best uh, Zoe. Zoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zoe's is also very, very good. That's okay. Uh, and that's... One of the things that character affects, they also, of course, have different stats, as you may have seen on the menu. The main viable characters are the four that were featured in this bid war, those being Zoe, Kaori, Elise, and Mac. I believe Zoe is the best, generally speaking, but Kaori, not a bad, not a bad pick at all, and I believe Junior's favorite character. You're nailing his rails, by the way. That's okay. Oh, I had I spoke too soon. <laughs> that <laughs> area that's a is really... probably the hardest part of the entire run to nail consistently because of the weird lineups for the rails and buildings. Yeah, but it's okay. I have, that like, last rail, tons of backups. That last rail especially is brutal. <laughs> yep. But I can still get up here. This is where the rails would have led to. Mm -hmm. So there are also a few different terrains in this game. There's, you know, your general snow. Uh, there's also powder, which is basically deeper snow. Uh, you'll go a little bit slower and sink into that a, a bit more. Yeah. And there's ice, in which you will accelerate faster. There are also some, like, bonus terrains, so to speak, such as rocks, which you'll generally skid across. And rails, as we saw earlier, those are usually best. You can go ultra fast on rails, especially while boosting. And there is also a speed boost power-up that can be collected. Alright, what's coming up is the first select warp in this run. A select warp is when you go to a specific spot and you hit select to warp yourself out of there. 
and the game throws you forward to like a much further checkpoint further in the level. I'm going on top of this building, it's like orbing, and I just got chucked forward basically. Yeah, so as you can see, it basically respawns your character and is sort of meant to... It's kind of meant as a safety tool to avoid soft locks and such, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Really neat tool, um, really neat how we can use it to basically skip forward in the track. And that is the and first that's Mercury City Meltdown. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, the next track I'm going to go to is Tokyo Megaplex. If anyone noticed, I only have myself and one other border, Hero. The reason for that is this track and its uh, immense RNG. Yeah, so as you'll see when we get into the level, Tokyo Megaplex has a lot of different buttons and moving parts of track. And the AI snowboarders can hit these buttons, so we want that to happen as little as possible. Yeah, I'm going to explain most of where all the RNG is on the first lap. And since this is a unique track where it repeats itself three times, we can use most of the rest of that for donations or other messages. Here's the first instance of RNG. This fan, it can send you anywhere between the left, middle, and right. It can also send you either on top of the rail or not. I got lucky. This is almost optimal. And Rails are very finicky in this game. Yes. Links with a select warp right there. And I hit that button. And I want this button to stay down. These doors are another instance of RNG. They can open and swing close on a whim, so you just kind of have to be ready. As are these sliding bumpers and those doors. Besides my one mistake, I got a pretty fair first slap. And I tap boost to maintain this speed I have. Tap boosting is essentially just when you're at a good speed, you use that to maintain your boost. Like, maintain your speed while conserving boost, essentially. And one thing I want to mention here is that <laughs> Junior's not going to go over this because it's awful, but <laughs> there is a way you can skip a lap on this track. It involves pretty much like going back up the rails and then jumping back into the fan. I don't entirely understand it because I don't play this game very much, <laughs> but it's absurd. So if you ever get a chance to see it, definitely check it out. It's really funny. To be honest, even I barely understand it, and I played this game. It's a ridiculous skip that's very difficult. Um, but yeah, I think now's a good time for any messages you might have. Oh, sounds good. We do have donations coming in. Thank you again, everyone, for supporting Prevent Cancer Foundation. We have $50 from Verdant Mischief, who says, Hi, Sammy. Smiley face. <laughs> Thank you so much for that one. We also have $25 from Johnny, who says, Oh, you really made it, huh? It's unreal. So proud of you, buddy. Keep it up. Tear up those slopes. Put my dono to Yakuza Super Boss. Oh, that's a great incentive that we have open right now. We have already met the karaoke performance incentive for that run, but the Super Boss Showcase for Yakuza happening either later today or later tonight, depending on your time zone, still needs some help. It's at just under 9000 out of the needed $30,000, so that's one of your donation options. We also still have Holtec Void Plus Showcase, again, under $200. So if we can meet that one during this run, that'd be really exciting. Again, that'd just be great for the runner to know that's going to happen. So they can give us the best showcase possible. I would just like to say a 2.35. Yeah, that's my best time I've gone on console. It's a very strong time for a track wow. as inconsistent as this one. Like Honestly, yeah, category. after that one mistake... After that one mistake, that looked really good. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, next is another difficult track. I, I mentioned in the interview, Mesa Blanca. This one's the one that has the Wild West aesthetic. And Mesa Blanca, or as, or as I call it, 50-50 rail. You'll see why. You will see why, yes. <laughs> we love Rozel, the announcer, by the way. He's the greatest. But, um... Yeah, this track has a lot of cutting through trees, avoiding rocks narrowly, uh, rails, a lot of rails, and it's very tight, like has a lot of tight jumps as well. But when you are like consistent at it or like get a good run, 
it does feel really good. You didn't get a start boost there, but that's okay. I forget if Felix mentioned it, but like each character has a slightly different timing for the start boost. Yeah, I did mention that. So this, as you can see, this track has a lot of trees and rocks, and so Junior will be taking some very specific lines here. Yes. Uh, something I also wanted to bring up that I almost forgot about <laughs> is the control scheme that Junior is using. There are a couple different control schemes in this game. Oh, yes. And yes, Junior is specifically using the pro control scheme rather than the default one. And that's because it allows Junior to turn while holding jump, which is not something you can really do on the default scheme. Yeah, it helps a lot with optimal lines and like lineups while you're holding free lines, um, which is basically just how you get faster spins in the air. It's a lot of like it's basically required in show off as well, the tricks category. Speaking of tricks, there is a board style that is specifically tailored to that, uh, called Freestyle. And then to contrast that, there's the Alpine board, which is tailored towards speed. But one we always use in the speedrun is called BX, the balance sort of board. Yes, that is what I'm using right now. That means mm -hmm. okay. Formation point tree. Oh, I didn't get a jump out. That's okay. How did you get on that rail? Oh, wow. <laughs> you really have to master how rail physics work. Leaning up your board a lot like that helps you get on a lot more rails that you would like otherwise miss. You'll see me do it a lot in Snow Dream. Snow Dream teaches you a lot about that. Okay. And that's Mesa Blanca. It was a decent Mesa Blanca. So coming up next is Elysium Alps, I believe. Yes. This, I, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself, but this is kind of my best IO, because it's the one I spent the most time on. Hopefully I can perform in a way that shows that off. It's also the longest, like by far, like at the highest level. Uh. Um... The current world record is a 3 minute, 6 second, like 306.50 by Kelly Cat. So, yeah, so yeah we'll, it's a pretty we'll be here a while. Hmm? We'll, we'll be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there will be a good amount of time for donations and whatnot as well. This also has the most amount of select warps in 4. You see the first one in like the first 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. This first one comes very early. That's okay. Welcome to the Elysium Alps. Okay. A little bit of a slow lineup, but I still get the warp. And it throws me all the way forward right there. And I can just squeeze through there. Mm -hmm. So this will be three minutes of optimization, basically. Basically. The best lines possible. Uh, we should explain bunny hopping. I believe about a minute in, you will do some bunny hopping. Oh yeah. It's not a big thing in this game as much as it is in, like, say, SSX Tricky. But um, we'll see it in Untracked since the incentive for the extra tracks got met. Thank you all for that. Um, but in Powder, your board and your border typically sink under. That was actually a good bailout. Because... You can jump like that, and it helps you stay above the powder. And usually helps you maintain max speed, 74 miles an hour. Alright, coming up is the second ward. You just warp all the way to the bottom of that jump. I say there's some time for donations right now. 
sounds good. I'm going to do my best with this one. It's $50 from DJ Atomica who says, Hey folks, DJ Atomica here. It's time to shake what your mama gave you. SSX is peak time and it would be a gin and sin to not donate with no remorse to this top bomb of a game. From the Elysium Alps to Mesoblanca, get ready to enjoy this snow dream of a game before you have a Mercury City meltdown and watch this style mile of a run. It's about to get SSX tricky down these deadly descents, but Junior is about to go SSX on tour like a pro and show us how it's done. I hope some of you see what I did there. Thank you so much for that $50 donation. That was wonderful. That was a fantastic read. Yeah. <laughs> All right. People are so wonderful with their donations. Please keep sending them in and supporting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. There you go. You still have time for a couple more. The rest of this track is basically just straight away and path boosting. Sounds good. We have $5 from Prod16 who says, Gotta get in a donation for FFX, one of my favorite game series. I also absolutely love to see virtual avatars being welcomed to GDQ. Thank you for that $5 donation. And for everyone donating $5, $50, $100, it all makes a difference. You saw our bid work come down to literally 20 cents. I'm still not over this. So every <laughs> little bit does help. Every bit does count and every bit makes a difference. Thank you all. We also have ooh, $500 from 1112 who says, digging these runs, gotta put that money towards that delicious cake in Portal. Hoping for a sing-along at the end of Portal? Fingers crossed. Portal is making some moves here. It's at 23,000 out of that needed $80,000 for that bonus game. So keep your donations coming in strong. All right, that was the end of Elysium Alps. Three minutes, 17 seconds is a pretty good time. So I'm pretty content with that. Let's see. Up next is actually Snow Dream. I mentioned it before, but it's another track like Mesa Blanca. Oops, not least. It's another track like Mesa Blanca where it's very tight, but instead of having a ton of trees and rocks and then a couple rails, it has like all rails, basically. I'm going to try my best to get on as many of them as I can, but the rail mechanics in this game can be a little iffy and like the hitboxes can either be really large or like really small depending on how they feel so we'll see how much yeah. this track agrees with me i we haven't seen anything particularly egregious yet this run but sometimes <laughs> sometimes, junior will, sometimes yeah. yeah sometimes junior will land directly on a rail and the game will just say no like it gets bad sometimes <laughs> it's, it's been it's been okay so far though but yeah, lots of rails and tight jumps here in Snow Dream. Ten rails like that, they happen a lot. Whenever you see a ten rail, that's usually you were close to the rail, but still too far. All right, there's another precise rail coming up. Let's see if I can get it. Awesome. Oh, they really like me. <laughs> Let's see, I'm probably gonna hit that. Yeah, but that's totally fine. Because I want to be here. I'm gonna do a couple hops around here. Just to help myself maintain being over the powder. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, the tree. okay. Oh, I see. The warp threw me all the way to the top of this entire section. That can happen sometimes. Oh, no. It's not the worst thing, but this game does have a lot of, like, areas where you can warp, and it'll throw you, like, very far backwards, almost like the opposite of slip warp. So you just huh. have to be conscious me of it. it. It reminds me of some of the older Mario Kart games. <laughs> yeah, basically. Squeezing through here. And that's basically the track. Oh. That's all right. I had a couple hiccups, but it was far from bad. 
It happens. Uh, coming up next is Aloha Ice Jam, the last track in the run. This one has a really neat clip at the start that I think Junior is going to give three attempts. Roughly, yeah. You can just there. There will be a wall to the right that you can just totally clip through. Um, yes. Hopefully, we see it. It's very finicky. So. Yeah, it's only a little bit more agreeable than the lap skip uh, strat in Tokyo Megaplex, which isn't saying much. So, like, I'll give it a couple tries. If I don't yeah. get it, I'll just continue with the whole run. Um, time will come up at the end of this track, though. Pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty close. That one, not so much. That's what you want to see. Yes, let's go. <laughs> that is so hard. <laughs> it is very hard. I'm actually really happy I got that. I'm also very happy you got that. That's awesome. <laughs> Three attempts is not a lot, so the fact that you got it is really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All Junior's right. so good at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a silly wipeout, but not a bad one. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, I believe there's like a lucky speed boost you can get entering that cave that you yeah. told me about. It's like really rare, but like sometimes for some unexplainable reason, you can just get a lot of momentum in that watery cave. Okay. I like this section right here. It's very satisfying for a while. This is such a cool and unique track. That was another case of pulling my board down. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This track is basically over. I have one select warp right here. And then the finish line is like five seconds from here. We'll get ready on time. And... time. Hold well on, that was a great ice jam. Yeah, that was really strong. It only took me a couple of tries to get the, the wall clip too, so I'm very happy with that. All in all, not too bad of a run, actually. Um, since the other tracks were also met, I can also perform them as well, of course. But I have to go to free ride for them because they're not race tracks. Okay, sure. I want to say congratulations again on that run and thank you again everyone for donating. We met this incentive way back raising over $3,000 or sorry, yes, $4,000, my bad, $4,000 for this extra track showcase. This is all thanks to your generosity that we get to see these next two tracks. And oh, I'm so excited. They're really unique and really awesome. Um, For these two tracks, I'll say about five minutes. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So these are the two bonus tracks, Pipe Dream and then Untracked. Mm hmm. Thank you all for donating, by the way. Yeah, it's great. I really appreciate it. This track. So Pipe Dream is. Yes, you go, you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's very basic. It's only a minute long, it doesn't have a lot of tech. It mostly has one well-timed jump that you need to worry about, and the rest is just holding straight lines. The reason it's so basic is because this is a show-off course, but I'm racing through it. I don't really care about performing so much as going fast. Alright, so that really precise jump is coming up. That's great. Wow, incredible. That is so hard to do. That is exactly what Junior wanted. If yeah. you land on like the very lip of that ramp, you can kind of get pulled down just like that. Yeah, converts all your um, forward momentum into like vertical momentum. Or rather, the opposite. 
it pulls you down and pushes you forward a lot. And there's a very tiny adjust on the second to last rail here that Junior's gonna do. Just that. <laughs> it saves like 0.1 seconds. Basically. It's very small. It's extremely minute, but it saves, like, it's important in the IL if you're going for, like, let's say, sub one minute, three seconds. Uh, this IL is incredibly optimized, as you can imagine. Most of the ILs in this game are getting to be that way. Let's see. 10408. I'm happy with that. It's pretty good. That's really solid, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is really nothing that went wrong there. You got the jump, and then it's <laughs> the rest of the track's pretty simple, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of the reason it's so optimized. There's only one, two things to worry about. Um, Untracked, exactly. on the other hand, this is a far more dynamic track and is also my favorite in this whole game. Yep, so this track is entirely powder, and you might recall from way back at the beginning of the run, I said that powder is slower, you will sink into it more, because it's like deeper snow, basically. Yes, so what I'm going to be doing is, this is where you'll see the most amount of like jump strats, bunny hopping. I'm going to try and sort, like, I'm trying to keep my board above the ground while also getting good boost from the big airtime and forming the straightest path I can possibly see. Right here is the first select board. There's two of them in this track. I do bunny hops to go forward and then warp a little bit forward. Something we did not touch on is uh the tricks. Doing an experimental which uses... It has the most buttons. It's button combat. Yeah. Most buttons. That gives you the most boost. But tail grab is the fastest trick to do. Yeah, so there will be times where like you need boost and like you'll think, oh, I want to do an experimental. But you don't have that much air. So you just have to do a tail grab and get what you can get. Little things like that help make it for like a lot of like boost precision. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of bunny hopping here. This track is very precise and skill intensive, and bunny hopping kind of plays into that. Yeah, I'm trying to, like, for big jumps like that, I'm trying to ride the top of them so I get less airtime. That rail is finicky. It looks huge, but you just <laughs> it's not. You went straight through that rail. I, you went directly through that rail. That was wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lucky. <laughs> They just bonk into the tree, it doesn't matter. Okay, or he's fine. Yeah, <laughs> she's alright. She doesn't care. <laughs> alright, here's another tight rail. Looks massive, but really isn't. And then gonna squeeze through here. Do some more bunny hops, and then another select board. Chucks me all the way forward here. This is the second longest track in the game, by the way. It's about 20 seconds shorter than Elysium Alps at the highest level. This is such a neat track. I love this concept. It's amazing. It's very satisfying to play casually and at the highest level. All right, the end of the track is basically here. It's a lot of straight aways from here. Like, I'd say just like, 15 seconds of just path boosting and going to the left. Yeah. Just get ready on time again. Yeah, it's going to be right when I'm under that helicopter. Alright, and time. GG's, Junior. Well done. GG! Thank you. That felt like a pretty good untracked, too. It was. It was almost a 2 4 X which is like where the times start getting really precise. So I'm happy with that. Any and, and shout outs that you have? Yes. Uh, let's see. First, I'm going to shout out Helix. Because, <laughs> <What? laughs> yes, they're the person that made me like submit in the first place to GDQ. Like, they did you submit? <laughs> <laughs> OK, but like they convinced me they were just like worth that can happen is I get a no. And I was just like, yeah, sure, why not? I did not expect to actually, like, get in. 
Because I've only been like speedrunning this game for like eight months now. So to have a, like achieve something that I consider like beyond my wildest imagination in like such a short time span, I'm just like eternally grateful. I just want to say real quick, like I've been watching you start running this game and get better and better, and it's been so cool and inspiring to see. And watching you eventually get into marathons, and I'm I'm really glad that you got this opportunity at GDQ. I'm I'm so proud of you. Congrats on the run. <laughs> Thank for real. you so much. Um, I have a couple of the shout outs I want to make. Um, the SSX community at large, it's a small one, but they're all pretty like committed to the series. They love the games. They're kind people that I can talk with, and I appreciate all of them. So, um, yeah, you guys rock. Thank you for supporting me. Um, Daggy and Rithic are two SSX3 runners, well, in the past anyway, that I used to watch a lot. I wanted to also shout them out because they're, I only realized this recently, watching their SSX3 runs was one of the things that really got me into speedrunning as a whole. I would just try to mimic their runs and whatnot, so... Um, I'm grateful to them for like putting out all the content they did. Uh, Kelly Cat, I mentioned before, he's like the best overall player of the SSX series. He's taught me a lot, a majority of what I know now, and has been like a good friend and rival to me. So I appreciate I appreciate him as well. Um my friends obviously for always supporting me. As well as GDQ staff for like working so hard behind the scenes to put this all together. Like this is just a great event for a great cause. I'm like honored to be here. And you can't understate the amount of work they all put in, so I wanted to publicly thank them for that. Um, where can where can everyone find you if they want to watch your stream? Yes, you can find me at twitch.tv slash junior underscore sm. I'm usually streaming either this. I'm like learning SSX tricky right now. I've spent some time with SSX3 and I'm going to revisit that to learn it more as well and I'm also revisiting Crash Team Racing and like speedrunning that game more as well so if you like old racing games then yeah just check me out Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Junior and Felix on commentary for that wonderful, wonderful downhill adventure. That game was such a treat to watch. And I know I'm not alone in those feelings. We got $50 from Tisud, who says, I'm so glad to see SSX at GDQ. Let's get that super boost and go faster than ever before. And speaking of fast, we are about to head into a fast break. I will be stepping away from the night, but THE Kyle Thomas will be on the microphone to read all of your wonderful donations on the other side. So please keep those donations coming in in support of Prevent Cancer Foundation. For now though, stretch, hydrate, and we'll see you again soon.